God and football. Many consider it a perfect Sunday in the South, but when COVID first hit, many places of worship had to call a timeout. Now, two years later, here in middle Georgia, faith leaders say they are still feeling the impact when it comes to the pandemic and the pews. Walk into any middle Georgia house of worship on a Sunday morning and you will likely hear someone say the doors of the church are always open. That is until COVID-19. Life, you know, with the church being shut down, you know, who'd ever seen that? They will never be the same. Faith leaders were no longer just saving souls. There was no playbook for this. They had to make the tough decisions of the best way to protect families. In March of 2020, churches watched as Governor Brian Kemp signed shelter in place orders and place limits on gatherings. Places of faith were not required to close, but the executive order force many like the Community Church of God in Macon to find new ways to worship. We just knew to be responsible. It was good for us to close and to have our services online. Temple Beth Israel in downtown Macon moved services online too. Hopefully we'll get back to in person. Today, Rabbi Elizabeth Bahar says her congregation now has a COVID committee. It makes decisions about events, mask and vaccination requirements, and the best way to minister to people using technology. But even as a result of COVID, I find myself going into people's homes a lot less. Faith leaders say that lack of true connection is the biggest burden they face during COVID. There's something powerful about being in community with other people. Like there's just something magical that happens there that I can't replace online. It's the main reason Pastor Corey Moyer decided to keep his doors open. We never really closed the doors of the church. I mean, we abided by what the governor said, but uh, if there were people that one or two folks that showed up, then they did come into the uh, sanctuary. Moyer pastors the United Community Church in Macon. Both in-person and online services have always run at the same time. One of the first sermons that I preached during the pandemic was that you cannot live stream church. His church held vacation Bible school with smaller class sizes for kids in 2020 and 2021. And before vaccinations, his church was one of the first to organize a drive-in Easter service where members worshiped from their cars. To date, there has not been a time to where there has been an outbreak within the church. After about four months, senior pastor Jason McClendon says when Community Church of God decided to reopen, they wanted to reach out. A lot of people were hurting, a lot of people were scared. It was just a great opportunity to introduce people to Jesus. Its Community Empowerment Center offered COVID-19 testing, vaccinations, and even food and clothing giveaways. We've probably given away maybe one and a half million pounds of food during this pandemic, and we're excited about that. But what about now as people return back to the pews? Michael Hawkinson with the North Central Health District says large gatherings like worship service can lead to greater COVID exposure. But he says the state sees little impact by opening and closing gathering spots. Instead, he says the greatest line of defense is assessing the personal risk for yourself. Each individual should look at their own personal situation. And, and essentially say, what can I do to protect myself and others? Hawkinson says houses of faith can help by keeping members socially distant, providing masks for indoor gatherings, checking ventilation systems for proper airflow, and limiting the time together. That could mean shorter services like they do here at Community Church of God. The Holy Spirit moves and blesses us in that same amount of time. But Pastor Moyer says he will always keep in-person service if it means he can see his members face to face and check in like he did one Sunday with the member he says was considering taking his own life. And that was a tremendous impact on me to ensure that as best we can, as safely as we could, uh, that we would meet in church because I would have missed that person just looking at a camera. Now, faith leaders say technology has its good and bad aspects. Rabbi Bahar tells me that it allows followers to catch sermons on their own time or rewatch a lesson. And Pastor McClendon says it does help reach people outside the church building. But on the other hand, everyone talked about the inability to truly connect and have fellowship.